referred to as a don't ask, don't tell policy. Posters don't ask and the public doesn't tell us how little they know or care about an issue. It's generally, do you favor or oppose? It's not, do you favor or oppose or don't you have an opinion? That's the way it could be done. But most major media polls avoid the, or don't you have an opinion? If you read, and I'm sure you did last Sunday, I'm sure it was right on top of your priority list, an article by Dahlia Sussman that talked about various question wording. Remember that article? Good, all right. Anyway, she's writing this article about different question wording producing different results on whether people support health care. And one of the little comments that she made in there is, some pollsters will say that you should include or don't you have an opinion. But she had just cited John Krosnick, a colleague of ours at Stanford University, who has a pretty fixed view with respect to what you can do. So you should know that a lot of what I'm presenting here is not necessarily accepted by the world. There's controversies that go on. Okay, so I have an issue with John about what we can ask. And he thinks you should ask everybody everything because even if they don't think they have an opinion, they probably do. I think if you think you don't have an opinion, you probably don't. And that's the, the different view. In any case, what we wanted to find out, anyway, what Dario Sussman said was, one of the problems with asking about whether you have an opinion or not is that if we give you the option of saying, I don't have an opinion, then a lot of respondents will be inclined not to think, not to think, but rather to escape to the no opinion area and, and almost verbatim saying, and not really think about the issue and come up with a real opinion. Well, the truth is, in my view, that if you're being asked a question about a complicated health care program, and you haven't thought about it before, the notion in the, in the nanosecond between the time the interviewer finishes speaking and you're supposed to respond, you can go through a complicated thought process and come with a real opinion, just ludicrous. Of course you give people the opportunity to say, I don't have an opinion. You don't have to browbeat them. You don't have to say, or, you know, are you, uh, if I ask him a question, what forces him to say, I don't have an opinion, just say, or don't you have one? In any case, back to the next thing. We wanted to find out was how intensely people felt. If you use these forced choice questions, you get a lot of people who say things, but then they don't necessarily care if that opinion prevails. So, for example, let's go back to the Iraq War. The Iraq War has been portrayed as one in which we produced, or at least the administration and the whole country produced, a saber rattling public. The public was in favor of the war. In fact, I read commentary since then that said, you can't blame just the Bush administration. You have to blame the American public because they were clamoring for war. All right. So, if you take a look at the polls that were taken about a week before the invasion began, you'd have to say, Ooh, looks like we did have a saber-rattling public. Almost all those polls indicated better than two-to-one support for going to the war. And the typical question is, do you favor or oppose the United States sending troops to the Persian Gulf region in order to remove Saddam Hussein from power? There are a lot of reasons why that's a biased question, but it's a fairly objective question, but it's still, in order to remove Saddam Hussein from power, of course, implies that once he's removed from power, we're finished, which, as we know, was not the case. It was a war in which we were going to engage in nation building, which was never asked. Okay, so what we decided to do, a colleague of mine at Gallup, is use a follow-up question which is designed to measure how seriously people treat their own opinion. The follow-up, so the standard question, let's go back. Standard question is what I just said there. And this is what we got in this particular poll. In this particular poll, 59 to 38, that was taken February 17th to 19th, 2003. And of course, we went to the war in March. So we're talking about you know, only a couple of weeks before we actually went to war. Then we followed up with this question. If the government, for people who said that they supported or favored going to war, suppose the government does not send troops to Iraq, would you be very somewhat, not to or not at all upset? And suppose you said, I oppose the war, 
Suppose the government does send troops to Iraq. Would you be upset? And here's the reason we did that. What we were trying to do was distinguish opinions that people hold, though from though the opinions that people hold very seriously, at least enough to say I'm upset if what I want doesn't come about. If I say, oh, let's go to war, but I am not upset if we don't go to war, or if I say, no, I don't think we should go to war, and I'm not upset if we do go to war, that suggests that people don't have a very well-angered opinion. They don't really care. They may have been forced into asking the question, pressured more or less, by the way the question was asked. Do you favor oppose the war? Assuming you have an opinion, because we didn't give the option for no opinion. So you're in an interview situation, people ask you a question, of course you're going to respond, you come up with something, you say, okay, yeah, I think we ought to go to war, but I wouldn't be upset if we don't. All right, so what does that mean? When you take the people who said I would not be upset <coughs> if the opposite happened of what I just said, and you stuff those into this category, like a little thing, in this category right here, the unsure no opinion, and you leave only those people who said, I favor it and I would be upset if we don't go, I oppose it and I would be upset if we did go, and these are people who either said, I don't know what I feel about it, or I don't care. So this is, I think, a more realistic view of the American public right before we went to war evenly split amongst us certain groups, but with a plurality, 41%, who didn't care one way or the other. Now when I say didn't care, I don't mean to say they didn't care about war, but who didn't really have such a strong opinion that they would be upset if we did this or we did that. And those people over here, my colleague and I refer to as people with a permissive opinion, right here. They may have an opinion, but basically they're saying it's up to the leaders to make the choice. I don't want to be bothered, can be some, I don't know anything about it at all, or I'm confused, whatever it is, and I won't be upset if whatever happens. So, that's a very different way of going, of thinking about public opinion from what is typically uh, put there. Um, <clears throat> so this is the, this is the comparison. This is the report that we that Gallup put out. This was an experiment, so we didn't report it. What we reported is what everybody else was reporting, a very substantial majority of the American public in favor of going to war. When I think the truth, by the way, realize the truth is kind of fuzzy here, it's a matter of interpretation, but a realistic assessment of the public was the public was mostly, was evenly divided with respect to going and not going, and a plurality was really essentially unsure as to what should happen. Now the reason that's important is that the justification, a part of the justification, post hoc justification for going to war is that the public supported it, and the whole interpretation of what was going on at that time suggested that the American public was forcing people to go. Now, I'm not saying the polls didn't encourage politicians because they saw polls that suggested a whole, you know, two to one support. But what I am saying that if we had a realistic opinion of the public, a realistic assessment of public opinion, we would have had a lot bigger picture. Okay. Um, just to give you another quick example of something that doesn't matter as much as the war did, but it was another experiment that we ran. Do you favor opposing reestablishing diplomatic relations with Cuba? What do you think most people would say? Yes or no? How many people think most people would say yes? Most people would say no? Interesting. I, I wouldn't necessarily know offhand, but I'm, this is what we found. Why not? Why not reestablish relations with Cuba? You know, I mean, at, at this time, it was, it was asked in 2004. That's a standard question. Okay, then we followed up. For those people who said that they favored it, we said, would you be upset if we didn't do it? And for those people who said they opposed it, would you be upset if we did? So, that's what the question is. By the way, what we did is we combined the people who said very upset and somewhat upset as upset. 
and people who said not to or not at all.